Now let's look at real-world studies of safety and tolerability. To date, no serious adverse events have been attributed to either of the broad-spectrum micronutrient formulas. Biological safety data from 144 children and adults in a paper published in 2011 showed no occurrences of clinically meaningful negative effects or abnormal blood tests that could be attributed to toxicity. Adverse events were only minor, and these were commonly transitory reports of headaches and nausea. Only one of the studies permitted a direct comparison between broad-spectrum micronutrient treatment and medication. This was a study comparing micronutrients to psychiatric medication for the treatment of autism-related symptoms. The group treated with medication had 6.5 times as many adverse events and more weight gain compared to the group treated with micronutrients. Now let's discuss what we know about the long-term use of micronutrients. In this study of 34 adults and children who had been taking micronutrients for an average of 2.66 years, CBC, LFTs, kidney function tests, coagulation profiles, fasting glucose, iron studies, key nutrients, and prolactin were tested. Excluding B12, which could be expected to be high, 94.6% were within test reference ranges, and those outside the reference ranges were mostly just outside reference ranges. One participant was diagnosed with hemochromatosis based on iron studies. No other clinically significant adverse effects were reported. The authors of the article on long-term use of micronutrients concluded, Overall, the substantial psychiatric benefits observed appear to outweigh the minimal observed risks in these participants. Larger long-term studies are needed. However, to date, funding for micronutrient research has been limited. Only through large sampling and post-marketing surveillance is it possible to identify less common adverse effects associated with this treatment. Now let's discuss laboratory testing. The current research has shown no significant changes in standard blood or urine measures. Laboratory testing in the adults ADHD RCT did show an uncommon asymptomatic clinically insignificant increase in prolactin levels, which was within normal limits in all cases. This increase was not observed in the child ADHD RCTs. Screening for potential medical problems is recommended before initiating treatment. The authors noted that although hemochromatosis is rare, given they did find a patient with it in their cohort, it seems reasonable to recommend screening for metabolic and electrolyte abnormalities before starting treatment to prevent similar future occurrences and possible harm. They suggested that pretreatment screening should include a CBC, CMP, calcium vos mag, copper ceruloplasm, vitamin B12, folate, and iron studies. Long-term pharmacovigilance monitoring is required to ascertain any rare but significant adverse events. In the absence of large studies with long-term use, it may be prudent to do occasional follow-up laboratory testing. For those with iron deficiency, the formulas are likely not sufficient to fully replete as the product contains very little iron. The products do contain enough B12 and folate for most individuals with mild deficiencies. The formula label notes how much of each nutrient is in the formula and can be referenced to see if additional repletion is necessary for those low in those specific nutrients. What are some potential side effects of micronutrients? Okay, well, before we delve into this, it's important to note that in all the RCTs, these minor side effects have occurred equally in both the micronutrient and placebo groups. Side effects were generally mild. Side effects included transient headache, which improved with hydration. Insomnia, which is not surprising, given B vitamins can be activating for some individuals. Loose stools, which were typically transient, as well as nausea, dyspepsia, flatulence. From a clinical perspective, GI side effects are often worse when combined with other treatments with GI side effect propensity, or those with pre-existing GI dysfunction. Anxiety, agitation, or impulsivity can occur if the dose is too high, and lowering the dose tends to reduce agitation for many. Lastly, the urine can change to a neon yellow color, secondary to harmless riboflavin excretion with micronutrients. The World Federation of Societies of Biological Psychiatry and the Canadian Network for Mood and Anxiety Treatments Task Force develop clinician guidelines for the treatment of psychiatric disorders with nutraceuticals and phytoceuticals and concluded that micronutrients had an evidence grade of A given the two RCTs that had been published at the time of the writing of the guidelines, 
as well as a meta-analysis showing supportive evidence of efficacy in ADHD as monotherapy, one in children and one in adults. They rated the strength of recommendation for micronutrients as weekly recommend for ADHD. They noted that this particular micronutrient formula's efficacy cannot be extended to other micronutrient formulas and rated the safety data for micronutrients as acceptable. Key points. Safety and tolerability data have been evaluated in several RCTs, and to date, there have been no reported severe adverse events attributed to these two formulas of broad-spectrum micronutrients. Side effects are typically mild and include nausea, headache, insomnia, GI symptoms, anxiety, and neon yellow urine. In the absence of large studies with long-term use, researchers have suggested baseline and follow-up laboratory testing. The World Federation of Societies of Biological Psychiatry and Canadian Network for Mood and Anxiety Treatments Task Force have weekly recommended the use of broad-spectrum micronutrients, rate the safety data as acceptable, and data for evidence as grade A.